This episode of Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by the Organisation of Panhellenism in Australia, opa.org.au. Yasas, I'm Anna Savo and this is Meraki TV. And for the next half hour, we're going to celebrate being Greek, Aussie style. Tonight on the show, we have Greek music superstar, Master Tempo. DJ Crazy Con gives us the lowdown on his recent US tour. We learn how to make a traditional pita from Konica. Ask what is the deal with the Parthenon marbles and get all the latest glitz and goss from Stavroula. But first up, comedian, actor, Greek-Canadian all-round good guy, Angelo Tsaroukas, talks to Maria Hochlastou about the universality of growing up Greek. Hi, and we're here with Agilos Tsaroukas from Canada, a fantastic comedian. Welcome, Angelo. Hello, uh, Maria, or should I call you Meraki? Maria Meraki, Maria Meraki, it's nice. Welcome back to Australia. Thank you, it's nice to be back in Australia. Angelo, let's start from yes. the beginning. Yes. With your parents, what did they do? Sorry. Yeah, my dad they... was in organized crime. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was, uh, uh, no, no, my, my, my father. Like, that would be back in Greece now. <laughs> back or... in Greece. <laughs> He's from Sparty. You don't know what's going to happen. Okay. But no, my father was, uh, my father was in the uh, food catering business. So he had the, I don't know if you have these in Australia, like these food catering trucks that would go to construction sites. Okay. And offices, a canteen. Uh, canteen. Right. Did you work with them? Uh, yes. I mean, I think it's mandatory. In our generation, if parents had a business, you were the employees. You stood on the crate. And stood on the crate. The and now, I mean, I remember at 12 years old helping out my uh, mom and dad. So if you were old enough to uh, add and do arithmetic, I think that's why Greeks are so good at business. We have a head start on every, the rest of the world. So what made, what inspired you to actually become a comedian? And in like high school, uh, my friend said, Andrew, you're always cracking jokes it was a variety show why don't you give it a try and i went on stage once and uh and then i, I was hooked at school school performance school or? performance it was a variety show 17 years old and i said i wanted to be a stand-up comedian in my yearbook what was your material then well i talked a lot about the my family i talked i didn't really get into the greek thing till later i'm going to tell you how the greek show happened so i remember in calgary my, uh, he's not my Cuba, my Cubaro, Nico. They have a band called Posidon, Poseidon. The bazooki player blew out a fuse in Calgary. It was at the Eliniki Kinotita in Calgary. 500 Greeks. I had just come out to hang out with my friends in the band. So my friend said, Angelo, we, uh, you, you got to get up and do something. We got to, they went to the store to get a fuse. So I went up unrehearsed and just started talking about being Greek. Like-minded, when I went up there, after 25 minutes, the whole room stood up in a standing ovation. Oh, that's fantastic. Because I was talking about everything that was connecting to them. Well, uh, yeah, I, I find that, you okay. know, obviously being Greek, whether I'm speaking to somebody in England or whether it's in America, we do have the same. We same understand thing. Exa exactly what the other one is talking about. Exactly. But what about the Greeks in Greeks? How, do they get <clears throat> they, our sense of humor? Is it the same? I was, look, I went for the first time uh, in November of 2013, in the middle of their Kriesi and debt crisis and everything. I was scared because I'm a Greek in the diaspora outside of Greece. Now, I didn't know how they were going to handle this in Greece. We made a documentary and we concluded it with the special. We sold out the theater. They loved the show. And the Greeks got it. Everybody was so supportive. Lakis Lazopoulos, who's the biggest star in Greece, he stopped the sitcom to come and talk to me. We went and saw his show. Lazopoulos stopped, hugged me. He goes, he goes, you're one of us. It was the best endorsement I can get from Lazopoulos. What would you attempt to do if you knew you wouldn't fail? You couldn't fail. What Gymnastics. <laughs> really? And that's a Greek world. <laughs> Gymnastiki, which means yimni, which means they were nude. I want to do gymnastics nude. What would I do if I, if I couldn't fail? You know, if I could do one thing and couldn't fail, it would, it would be 
it's going to sound ironic in a sense, feed all the starving kids in the world. That's continuously. The, uh, continuously. If you couldn't fail. Angelo Tsarukas, thank you. Thank you. Ask any yaya or Greek mother for their traditional Greek recipe, chances are you might end up in a little bit of strife. I mean, first there's the secrecy, and then there's the whole thing of Greek measurements. How much is mia hufta or metomati? Well, we're proud to present a series of Greek Aussies who have done just that. Tonight, Rita shows us how to make a traditional pita from Konitsa. Yaya's secret recipe is proudly brought to you by M and J Chickens, supplying high quality poultry based fresh products, value added, flavoured and fully cooked meals and meal components to the hospitality, food service and retail in Australia. For superior quality and service, choose M and J Chickens. We're revolutionising the way you think about chicken. Hi, my name is Rita and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pita from my hometown in Konitsa, Ipiros. We're going to start by making our filo first. We're going to add our flour into our bowl here. We're going to make a little bit of a well in the middle. A couple of pinches of salt. We're going to just drizzle a little bit of oil in here. And now we're going to slowly add our water and start to mix our dough. We want our dough to be quite soft. It will be quite sticky until we get that right consistency. close to the consistency that we want to have with our dough. To rest our dough, we've put it into a clean bowl and we're going to cover it with glad wrap. Okay, so while our dough is resting, we're going to do our filling. You can add what I've been told by aunties and uh, grandmothers and what have you, is that you can add anything green to this Bitter. So you can put parsley, you can put mint. I add a good handful of salt and olive oil. Again, the olive oil, it's up to you how much olive oil you want to use. I will use probably about four tablespoons of olive oil in all of this filling. The, you need to be a little bit careful though because you don't want to add too much olive oil. Once we've added the salt, there's going to, all the moisture is going to draw out from the onions and the spinach and it will start to cook a little bit as well. And it will mean that our filling will become quite watery. So we want to be careful not to make it too runny, our filling. We're now ready to roll out our pastry. Put a little bit of olive oil in, our, in the bottom of our pan. So we want, we're going to make little uh, balls out of our filler to get it ready. The bottom two filler are going to be bigger than the rest that we're going to put in there, so we want a larger amount of dough for the first two. So we've got our ball here. Because it's quite sticky, to help us to open it out, we're going to add flour. At this stage also, we want to turn on our ovens. So we place our rolling pin like that, pick up a little corner and flip it over. Pull it back a little bit and with this sort of motion rolling outwards we begin to open out our dough. Digital Press, we're your kind of printer. For whatever your printing needs, visit digitalpress.com.au. Sydney Earth Moving and Demolition. Whether your job is small or larger, let our experience guide you. Sydney Earth Moving and Demolition. 
Sweet Fantasy Cakes. No matter what your special occasion or personal craving, come and visit the Small Business Champions. Sweetfantasycakes.com.au Master Tempo has broken the mould in music, blending two absolute extremes, hip-hop and Greek Lake Gore, and he's done it with style. It was only after speaking with him that I realised only someone with as much passion as he has could possibly succeed at such an endeavour. I do hope you fall in love with him as much as I did. Guys, here I am with Petro from Master Tempo. Yes, hi, hi guys. Yes, us. Welcome to Australia. Thank you, Carlos Asbrica. <laughs> Looking at your music, I think you must love Lake Otrambi as well. Yeah, 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 yeah I do. To be able to do what you do, you must understand intrinsically both sets of music to blend them because they're so opposite. <laughs> You're the first person that said it so well. Yeah, you have to understand both. You cannot just say, I want to do something with uh, uh, like or because if you just uh, say it and you don't like like or you are not into it, you're not going to be able to make it. Uh, I was the first that started this whole thing and it was really difficult for me. Uh, even the guys that I was working with could not believe that it could be blended. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of fights in the studio. <laughs> like. No, we can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first songs, like uh, one of the first songs I did, uh, like uh, with uh, Greek, was uh, Thanos Petrelis, a remix uh, for uh, Adiorthoti, mm -hmm. that song. And we had epic fights in the studio if we should do that or not. Because I was like, this is something new. This is something that's going to catch on. This is something that's going to make us pave our own way. That's what I like as well. It's like, okay, uh, hip hop uh, was really big at the time. But we didn't do what everyone else did. We did something new. Uh, we blended it with uh, uh, like when with uh, like who singers. things that um, I think as a Greek Australian so many people love about your music because we hear a lot of American stuff as everybody does and to yeah. have a Greek star do hip-hop it's almost like it's second rate however yours stands alone and it stands out there's something very original about it do you have plans to try and break out into say the English market since I have been a prominent figure of uh, connecting uh, like Kus artists with rap, I don't think I can uh, really go out and say now I'm gonna have an uh, an English speaking career. I, I feel like it's uh, uh, I don't know the word. Uh, it's gonna be uh, fake, yes. you know. It's like it's gonna be done just to be done. We say that in Greece. Tokans money and tokans. I'd rather do what I know best. I'd rather do what. Uh, people uh, love uh, me and the whole thing for and uh, let other people do it w who know it better. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us on Meraki TV and I can't wait to the Thank concert tonight. Thank <laughs> <laughs> The name DJ Crazy Con is synonymous with modern Greek music in Australia and now it seems he's set to take on the world. Fresh from his US tour, please welcome DJ Crazy Con. Welcome home Crazy. Hi Anna, how are you? Very good, thank you. Tell us, how did this US trip come about? It's an amazing trip, it was my third trip to America. Uh, I have now done uh, 10 shows in six cities in the last four years and America is a big market for me now there's a lot of Greeks over there my music is being distributed in physical retail and on iTunes in America so I had an uh, opportunity as I said for the third time to actually go to California the west coast this time and I got to spend eight days over there uh, four days in LA and four days in San Francisco so it was my third show in LA 
and it was my first show in San Francisco. So it was great to get over to those two cities. And how did they respond to the crazy Greek from Down Under? Yeah, they love the crazy Greek from Down Under. Like I said, we've done 10 shows there, there in America over the last four years. So we're starting to cause a lot of waves over there. And, you know, Americans are very loud. So when they find someone that's louder and crazier than they are, they really like the person. So, you know, it was, it was great two shows. We actually got to play at uh, Toros Locos, which is in Hollywood Boulevard for a Greek night. It was amazing. Uh, great club, great turnout, and just the LA Greeks were fantastic. And then I got to play at the Drake Lounge, a brand new venue in San Francisco, and they had a great turnout. It was actually a big Greek weekend in San Francisco. Or when I played there, um, they had the Greek festival over there. They had the film festival and the Greek night all on the same weekend, which they flew me into. So. The, the Greeks over there are fantastic and um, you know the response to me playing was was huge so it was a great great eight days over there. So if you had to pick an absolute highlight what would it be? I mean for this trip this last trip probably you know I mean it was the first time I played in San Francisco and it was um, you know an opportunity to play in Los Angeles I mean playing at a Greek night in Hollywood. I mean, it's surreal. It doesn't get much better than that. You know, you walk out of, you know, Toros Locos and you're walking past the Dolby Theatre where they're having the Oscars. I mean, it's, it's unreal. Any future plans for the US? Definitely the US is on the radar now. We just did West Coast and uh, now with my new CD coming out at the end of the year, hopefully at the end of the year we'll be able to go to the East Coast and visit places again like New York, Chicago, Boston, uh, Washington and any other place which is wants to see Crazy Con. So hopefully by the end of the year we'll be back there. Well we're so proud of you mate. Congratulations. Digital Press. We're your kind of printer. For whatever your printing needs, visit digitalpress.com.au Sydney Earth Moving and Demolition. Whether your job is small or larger, let our experience guide you. Sydney Earth Moving and Demolition. Sweet Fantasy Cakes. No matter what your special occasion or personal craving, come and visit the Small Business Champions. Sweetfantasycakes.com.au Here at Medaki TV, we're all about the fun and the gethy, but we're also about being well informed. That's why we created In 3 Minutes or Less. And tonight, we talk about the Parthenon Marbles. The Parthenon has survived wars, invasions, explosions and even the pollution of Athens. But there's a controversy that has surrounded it for nearly 200 years now. And even A-listers, such as George Clooney, are jumping on the bandwagon. So, what is the deal with the Parthenon Marbles? First, a bit of history. The Parthenon was built nearly two and a half thousand years ago as a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena so she would protect Athens and Greece in the Persian Wars. Later, the Christians turned it into a church and under Ottoman occupation, a mosque and even a gunpowder store. It first came under fire by the Venetians who bombed it to get to the Turks' gunpowder store and then continued vandalism and damage under the Ottoman Empire. It was during this time that the British Earl of Elgin paid the Turks for the right to literally cut and smash pieces from the Parthenon and take them back home. Years later, the British government bought the pieces off the Earl of Elgin and housed them in the British Museum where they live to this day. So now, half the Parthenon is in its birthplace of Athens and half is in the British Museum. So the argument is, is it legal that Elgin bought pieces of a national monument of an occupying force? Imagine someone buying pieces of the Eiffel Tower of Nazi Germany. Is it moral and ethical for Britain to continue to hold on to them all these years later? If there's one thing Greeks do really well, it's gotsombolio, gossip and news. And we have no fear of being left behind with the fabulous Stavroula and her glitz and goss. <laughs> 
Glitz and Goss is proudly brought to you by iSecure. To keep your family safe, let us keep an eye on your place. iSecureU.com.au Welcome to Glitz and Goss with Stavrula. Greek filmmaker Yorgos Lanthimos made another big splash with his latest film, The Lobster, at the Cannes Film Festival. The Lobster is a wickedly funny film where single people are arrested and sent to a boot camp to partner up. Anyone who doesn't mate within 45 days is transformed into an animal of their choice. This film is tipped to take out the most prestigious award given out at Cannes, the Palm d'Or. Thanos Petrelis brought the house down with an epic three-hour performance at the National Hellenic Museum Gala in Chicago, raising almost a million dollars in support of their legacy of Hellenism. Yorgos Tsalikis also brought the house down on his recent tour in the States, as did Banos Kiamos with his explosive show in Australia just last week. Sellout shows continue with Paola in Thessaloniki. More than 2,000 people in the Buzukia every Friday and Saturday nights. And a new album, Krivo Alitia, is out now. After mistakenly arrested in Belgrade, the Greek model with the title The Most Handsome Man on the Planet, Theo Theodorides, returns to the catwalk with a big bang. The model, who has left behind his adventures with drugs and prison, is preparing to star in the fashion show of his designer friend Badelis Mitsu in Limassol, Cyprus. A new Greek spirit is in the sky. Sky Greece Airlines has launched, offering direct flights between Europe and the US, waving the flag for Greece with the best high-level Greek hospitality from takeoff to landing. Let's hope it adds Australia to its flight route soon. Greek-Australian singer Vassi, the rising star of electronic dance music, has released a new track, Secrets, with top international DJ Tiesto. At the moment, she's collaborating with David Goetta and also in the studio with Greek DJ Dimitri Vegas. Vassi will have some big news coming up soon. Entourage, a giant hit at the moment. The movie about a TV show, about the movies and TV, about Hollywood, greed, sex, Sun, and a cameo appearance by glamorous Greek girl Maria Menounis. The Party Pirates are in town and coming to help raise funds for Save Our Sons charity against DMD, Sunday June 21 at Reevesby Workers Club, Sydney. Bring the kids and have a wonderful magical adventure. Don't miss out. Come and meet the Greek brothers Captain Blue and Captain Black. Check out the Party Pirates Facebook page for more info. And that's it from me. Till next week, Glitz and Goss with Stavrula. Glitz and Goss is proudly brought to you by iSecure. To keep your family safe, let us keep an eye on your place. iSecureU.com.au Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We do hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Remember, this is your show, so please let us know your comments by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter. I must thank all our sponsors tonight. Really, it's support like yours that keeps Hellenism alive in Australia. And an especially big thank you to our major sponsor tonight, the Organisation of Panhellenism in Australia. Please check out their website, opa.org.au. Pedia, until next week, filakia from me, Anna Suvo.